Hey, do us a favor. If you enjoy this video or any of the other videos here on the channel, please remember to a thumbs up or like it, share and subscribe as it really helps with the visibility of the channel and everything else. We appreciate it. After a bit of an absence, Audi has brought back the All Road. However, it's different this time. Last time it was based off the A6 platform, now it's based off the A4 platform. And we wonder, has Audi set this vehicle up for failure? What are we talking about? Well, let's dive into it here today on rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive. So the Audi All-Road was always a very interesting car. It was an A6 Avant, a wagon, an estate, give it a name. Um, Audi chose to call it the All-Road because they jacked up the suspension a couple inches, put some plastic cladding on it to give it more of a rugged appearance. But really the best thing about the All-Road, the original All-Road, was that it was a twin-turbo 2.7 liter V6. It had really good power. And if you called up the people at uh, APR, Stasis, it could have a lot of power. It was very much a Q ship at the time. Still is today, really. When it went away, it was really replaced by uh, the Q5 and the Q7. Audi decided to get into the very profitable SUV market. And seeing as how people really wanted SUVs more than one wagon, despite, well, at least in America anyways, uh, it made some sense. However, now Audi has brought the all-road back for those who want a wagon in America. Um, but we can't get an A4 Avant or an A6 Avant. We can only get, as far as wagons go, the A4 all-road. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not a great thing either. Here's the issue. It's the price. When we said, has Audi set this vehicle up to fail? We're not kidding. This car's base price is just shy of $40,000. The Q5's is less than that. As we're rolling right now in the prestige package with the fancy black paint on it. This thing stickers at 50,625. And this is a smaller vehicle. You can get a very similarly equipped Q5 for less money. Hence, have they really set this up to fail? Do Audi really even want to sell this vehicle here? Uh, or are they just bringing it here for those few people who really, really want a station wagon and a Avant? in a state, as we said, give it a name, depending on where you are, um, you know, it has a different name. But they're going to charge you a premium to get it. And they'll sell all the Q5s they can bring in or make. How many of the, how many of the estates are they going to sell? Hard to say. Um, but, but that's the dilemma. If it's our money, I like this a whole lot better than I like the Q5, just because it's most it's more more functional for the most point. That maybe doesn't have quite as much cargo room, but it drives a lot better. It certainly gets a lot better fuel economy, uh, which we're going to talk about more in a few minutes here. Um, and it's just the, the driving dynamics are, are a whole lot better. That's not to say the Q5 is a bad vehicle, because it's not. It's it's a very very good crossover small SUV. Again, it, everything's gelled together so much it's hard to figure out what to call what anymore. So let's take a step back and kind of go back to the beginning of do we like this thing? Yeah, it's an Audi. It's a station wagon. Okay, it's an eight-speed automatic rather than a manual, but actually we don't care too much about that. Um, it's an exceptional vehicle with some minor quibbles. Um, 
let's get the quibbles out of the way. The MMI. It's alright. Uh, it, it's not as good as the one in the A6. Um, I can't tell you exactly why, but it just feels more fussy. Uh, there are no dedicated buttons for either answering or hanging up phone calls. It's not really terribly easy to navigate through music menus if you have an iPod or iPhone. Uh, you can. It's just clumsy. The interior materials are good. Not fabulous. They're good. Well, let, let's, let's again, let's preface that. There's nothing wrong with the materials in the interior until you get to the point that, as it sits right now, it's a $50,000 vehicle. When we're talking $50,000, we're going to be a little more particular about some of the materials in here. Uh, there is hard plastic in here. Is there really room for hard plastic in a $50,000 car in this day and age? Uh, we don't think so. Or even at a base price of $40,000 in a luxury vehicle. Don't really see it. You really see a place for that. And it's right on the transmission tunnel where, depending on how you drive, your knee bangs against it or rests against it all the time. It's really where you'd want a softer touch material. Um, the display is okay sized. It's five inches maybe. It's, it's a little small. Um, especially when you get like an eight inch display, eight and, almost eight and a half inch display in something like a $20,000 Dodge Dart. Now, the layout looks good. Everything functions pretty well. Just some of the design of the button layout, not our favorite. Okay, can you live with that with some, you know, read, read the manual and training and just living with a car day in and day out? Yeah. You can. Um, the other issue is there's a lot of beeps and bongs and alerts all the time. Uh, you know, the, the safety attorneys are out in force in this car. You, If you have your car running, if you have this thing running, even if the key's in your pocket, so it's keyless ignition, if it's running and you open the door, all of a sudden it starts beeping at you and flashing you messages saying, turn off the car, turn off the car, you shouldn't leave your car running. Uh, when you're not sitting in the driver's I'm like, child, please, okay? Can I turn all that off? Probably, I and mean, I'm sure it's buried 19 menus into some other sub-menu that's 14 layers down. Again, these are the little things, and 90% of you don't care, and you're sitting there going, gee, you get to drive a Audi wagon, and you're complaining. No, not really. Actually, I've loved the week that we've had with this thing. It's been amazing. It reminds me why I, like so many other people, really like Audis. There is a quality, there is a the level of fit and finish, just shutting the doors it has that nice solid thunk sound to it. But there are some, as we said, just some annoying things that get in the way a little bit. Um, acceleration in the vehicle is good adequate. Um, we ran a couple different 0-60 to 60 tests using our Dynalicious software on our iPhone, and we were generally around 8 seconds 0-60. to 60. Your times may vary. We've seen testing uh, in other publications as low as 7.5 and, and as high as 8.2 for 0-60 to 60 time. So, yeah, we're in the ballpark. That's fine. Um, the turbo has good torque zero to about 20 miles an hour just to how it's geared you don't you're not feeling the thrust once you're over 20 and you put your foot into it again gearing turbo spooling things like that then it feels much better getting up to speed on a highway changing lanes you know it's it's the power is fine do i want the v6 uh, you know probably not to be honest with you uh the performance is good enough and the fuel economy has been spectacular. Now, the EPA ratings on this are 20 in the city, 27 on the highway, 23 combined. It's a two liter turbo, eight speed automatic. We have blown the highway miles mileage out of the water and we weren't trying. Uh, 
multiple times we have gone on highway runs of 30, 40, 50 miles and been well over 30 miles to the gallon. In fact, we had one where we were at 38 miles to the gallon. Now, with something funky going on there, uh, you know, it's the electronic gauge. I'm not going and, you know, filling it with gas, driving, and then filling it with gas again. I'm basically going off of what the dash says. But even if it's off by 10%, you're still well above the uh, EPA limits. You know, we put uh, well over 300 miles on this car, and we're two-thirds of the way through the tank, and, you know, that's a lot of mixed driving. It's not all the way miles. So, you know, that's that's not bad. You're definitely going to be able to go a week or two in, in between tankfuls. Um, I don't know if it's easy to tell, and we're not on the highway, so it won't be as obvious, but this Audi is incredibly quiet. Uh, rolling down the highway at 80 miles an hour, it's, you know, it's not tomb-like, because no car is, but you sort of forget about all the noise going on outside and just, you know, what's happening inside the car. So it's, it's great. The ride quality is very good. Um, it's firm in that you feel like you have good control, but there's no harshness. And trust us when we say in Michigan where, you know, the cliche, the roads are that bad. Yes, they are that bad. Uh, one of these days we're going to put up take some pictures of some of the roads we drive on and just roll them in and b-roll eventually and you can see just how brutal some of them are one of the things that if you're a frequent viewer of the channel you know that we tend to be critical on are the stereos in vehicles well this has the bang and olsen system as part of the prestige package which by the way is ninety two hundred dollars for that prestige package um I can't quite justify the entire price based on the stereo system, but maybe half of it. Because yes, you could go into a good stereo shop and you know price out a you know nice Audison with Voce speakers and whatever whatever else Highline stuff and JBL amps or Macintosh amps, you know whatever whatever you like, and you could probably build a system that sounds as good or better for less money. But 99% of people don't want to be bothered with that. They just want to buy it and be done with it. The Bang & Olufsen system in here is excellent. It's worth the money. If I have one criticism for it, is that the bass is lacking some warmth. If you listen to classical, to jazz, to electronic music, to pop music, it's it's really good some rock and roll i would say even some jazz um and some like trip hop music it just the bass is there but it just it's lacking just a little bit of work but i can live with that i really can because the mids are excellent and and the highs are just crisp crisp i mean we've listened to everything from like Dave Brubeck, everything with the girl, the Almond Brothers, Sammy Agar, um, you know, a little bit of everything, and it's just been excellent. And the more you crank it up, the better it sounds. I mean, this is one where you just roll the sun, roll the uh, sunroof back, roll the windows down, crank the music, and it's just exceptional. Now, uh, just so we don't get killed by YouTube and take down notices because of, you know, too much music. We're going to try and roll in some music here really quick off the stereo system. I'll see if I can find something here. Uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just go with the Almond Brothers. How's that work for you? And uh, that one, Whip and Post, that'll work. It's not the song I was looking for, but hey, you know, it's a classic. So, see if we can you can get an idea what this thing sounds like. So, 
We'll do one more in here too, because that's not the best song in, as far as intros go. So, um, and as we're doing that, we'll, you know, can you live with this car day in day out and function as a family vehicle? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, plenty of back seat room. Okay, it's not like gargantuan kinds of space, but it's it's more than enough. Again, 5'10", 5'11", seat set for me. I sit behind it, plenty of room, no problem. My, my knees aren't even close to being touching the, uh, touching the seat in front of me. Um, getting in and out is, is, you know, no problems out of the back seat. Plenty of room in the lift gate. Um, I'm gonna roll in a picture of some stuff we took for basically donating to Goodwill, uh, just clearing out, you know, it's part of annual spring cleaning, just stuff we haven't used in a year or two years. Yeah, let's let's donate it to charity is essentially what we did. We big big load to to, uh, to Goodwill, and it's uh, you wouldn't believe all the stuff we were able to put in the back of this thing when you fold the seat down. Ton of room. Um, so you know, everyone thinks you need an SUV. You don't need an SUV. It's this thing has more than enough room. So here we go, little Big Dave and the Ultrasonics, local band. I doubt that I'll get a takedown notice off of this. So hopefully it gives you a little bit. You can hear that you had enough bass in there. You should be able to hear the kick and everything. So, and I used to work with a couple of the guys from Big Dave and the Ultrasonic, so I can always contact them. And if anyone says anything, right? So, let's think about this for a second. The Audi All Road. It's really good. It's a fabulous alternative to a Q5. Most people aren't going to look at it because they just automatically default to an SUV. And, you know, too bad for them because they're missing out. This thing drives really well. It's fun to drive. Gets good gas mileage. Plenty of, you know, pep for, for what most people need. Um, you can haul almost all the cargo you'd ever want to want to haul in this thing. You mean skis, snowboards, you throw a kayak up on the roof, whatever, if, if you're an outdoors kind of person. And it's going to function well. But again, we get to the problem of Audi not setting it up for success in that they have priced it higher than the Q5. And as we said, it, it, it comes down to, to economics really in that they're going to sell a whole lot more Q5s than they are all roads, so they've got to price it appropriately. There is a market for these things in the United States, a small one, they'll fill it, but you're going to pay for that privilege. Given a choice between the two, I'll take this all day over the Q5, uh, and that's even you know owning big dogs. So, would, are you well served in this? Yes. Will you enjoy this? Yes. Are there better options on the market? Um, no, not really. I mean, how many small, medium, small to medium sized wagons are there? Are there in America? In this day and age, very, very few. And the next time we drive one that's better than this, we'll let you know. Until then, this is this is the ticket. I like it.